most current applications require a login so that only allowed users can access it, and also to authorize or restrict access to parts of the application according to the permissions assigned to each user. This means making sure that all the users who access the application are adequately authenticated. That is to say, they are who they claim to be, and authorized. Once the user is authenticated, he is given or denied access to certain parts of the application. In web applications, because they have several points of entry, any object that can be accessed from a URL must check authentication permissions. This implies that each one of these objects must have security checking incorporated in order to make the corresponding verification. Traditionally, a procedure containing the access control logic is programmed. This procedure must check the roles and permissions of each user accessing the application. In every object that is accessible from a URL, the code that invokes this procedure must be entered in order to perform the authentication before the object is opened. The more roles and permissions are involved, the more complex the security policies of companies will be. In addition, the code will grow accordingly, and at the same time, the checking of permissions that have to be replicated in every object also becomes more complex. On the other hand, smart device applications are distributed applications, so they are partially executed on the device itself. The app's business layer is implemented through REST services with an access URL, and that's why they're exposed to unauthorized accesses. Just like for web applications, we check that only authenticated and authorized users can access the application, so that users without the corresponding permissions are not allowed to run it. To meet these requirements, Genexus provides a security module called Genexus Access Manager. This module takes care of the authentication and authorization features for both web and smart device applications. The GAM has been developed with Genexus, so it can be easily integrated into the application's KB in order to solve everything related to its security in a centralized manner. Its objective is to have the security solution used in the most declarative way possible within the application without adding complexity. The GAM also provides a backend that allows creating users, security policies, and access to objects, among other things. In addition, it provides an API to access many of these features programmatically. To enable the GAM, we set the Enable Integrated Security property to true at the KB's active version level. When we enable the GAM, there is another property at the version level called Integrated Security Level which allows setting the default value for the security of KB objects. This property is also available at the object level, so it will be possible to customize how security will be implemented in that object. It has three possible values. None, which indicates that the object will be public, that is to say, it will have no security features. Authentication, which indicates that only authenticated users will be able to run it and authorization, which indicates that in addition to being authenticated, users will have to be authorized to run this object. That is to say, they must have the corresponding role to run it. Once the security features are configured, we need to run a rebuild all of the KB. When doing so, a dialog box will be opened to inform us that the GAM module will be installed in our KB with the solution ready to run on the web and on smart devices. Internally, authentication is implemented through Web Sessions for the security of web applications and OAuth for smart device application security. Authorization is implemented through roles, which means that the role-based access control model is used to encapsulate methods, properties, and everything necessary to manage the application's authorization. The GAM provides several authentication types, which are Local authentication, where users and all their credentials are stored in a database that we own Facebook, Twitter, and Google. In this case, the authentication mechanisms of these applications are used and there's no need to create local users. Authentication is performed in the Facebook, Twitter, or Google website, respectively. Many times, 
I need to integrate my application with other applications in order to exchange data. So I must implement my user's authentication using an external authentication method. One example of external authentication is using a SOAP web service provided by the other application and configuring the GAM to consume this web service. Also, the other application may provide an external program for authentication purposes, and it may not be a web service. In this case, I configured the GAM to accept an authentication of custom type. An application using GAM can act as an identity provider such as Facebook, Twitter, or Google. In this case, other applications that use GAM can connect to the server remotely and obtain the necessary information from there. To do so, I configure the GAM with a remote connection. With authorization, we defined how the objects are run, as well as permissions over the operation modes of transactions. This definition is made by granting, for every object, permissions to each role. The actual permissions over an object will depend on the roles assigned to users. This validation is made over the following web objects. Web panels, web components with the URL access property set to yes, and transactions. In addition, web transactions permissions over the insert, update, delete, and display modes are checked. Also, for smart device objects, work with for smart devices, and panels for smart devices and for the insert, update, and delete actions over work with for smart devices. The integrated security level property can also be configured at the object level so as to restrict access to only some of the app's objects. In this case, the permission prefix property can be used to indicate that a security check must be automatically made over the object through a security code that is automatically added by the generator when the object's source code is created. In addition, the GAM exposes an API to access its methods and properties if it has to be done programmatically from our application. The API's properties and methods are accessed through external objects, which are imported when the GAM is enabled in our application. Several actions can be performed, such as obtaining the logged in user if we need to use it within the application, or instead of the username, we may need his or her postal address or any other detail such as email. We may also need to know the authentication types configured in our app to check, for example, if we're accessing through Facebook in order to take some actions. Or, we may need to know the permissions associated with a role in order to do something with them inside the app. Once we've finished developing our app and we've added security features to it, we need to deploy it. To do so, we will transfer the objects in our application, including the GAM objects, to our production server. Some tools are available. For the application to run on a production server, we need to transfer the files created when our application's objects were compiled, for example, .class files for Java, or .dlls for .NET, as well as libraries and other resources, in addition to the GAM objects, as we've said before. To this end, we use the Application Deploy tool from the menu options Build, Deploy Application, where we select the main objects to be deployed and the target server, which may be a local server or a cloud server, such as Amazon Web Services, Windows Azure, IBM Bluemix, and others. You can read more about this topic by clicking on the link shown on the screen. In addition to the app's data, the application database, we need to transfer the GAM database. To do so, we use a tool called GAM Deploy Tool that can be executed from Genexus or as a standalone tool. It allows exporting from a repository or importing from another repository, creating the GAM database, updating the database schema, and so on. Here's a link to obtain more information about this tool. In order to reduce the risks that may compromise the app security, when deploying an application with GAM, we recommend reading the checklist that is available. For example, these verifications can include setting the web server with the HTTPS protocol, changing the administrator's password, deleting the user's used during testing, 
reviewing access permissions, and so on. To learn more about the recommended checklist, visit the link displayed on the screen.